Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. It is the full trio here with you today, Derek Young and Drew Galloway as well. Looks like Drew fixed his Fiesta Bowl poster behind him after somebody uh, called him out on that, said, hey, it looks a little crooked, so I don't know if there was an earthquake or something that took place in the Galloway household, but it's fixed now. It looks tornado, straight. Probably. A yeah, probably a tornado. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a tornado. It whiffed everywhere uh, except the Galloway household. So that's where uh, that's where we stand today, the three of us here. And it's probably a good time for us all to come together because one of the things that's hot in the streets right now in college football in general is lists. It is officially list season. We have not had games since January. We will not have games until August. They still feel forever away. Fake games on EA Sports College Football, they're still – months away so everybody's just busy cranking out lists left and right who's the best quarterback who has the best running back unit and if you're aware of these lists don't worry so is brian anderson k-state running backs coach who has been responding to them in what i think is the best way possible to like show support for your guys but also like not take them so seriously because somebody the other day was like well you know like you, you could see why it's confusing for you know idiot kicker at Iowa State on why he would get confused. It's like, well, I don't know. Like, I think it would be really stupid if Brian Anderson was crafting like 200 word responses to tweets and like, well, actually, I think Avery Johnson. It's like he Brian Anderson understands that these lists are very stupid. So we're not going to give you a list today. We are going to talk about this in a much more sane and humane way about quarterbacks in the Big 12, because that's probably been the hottest topic of discussion. There are a lot of teams. There are a lot of quarterbacks. And there are a lot of bad opinions out there on these quarterbacks. I am repping an, a different team today, shirt wise. I want to get that. Uh, Iowa State, the Miners. Oh, Utah wow! Picks Utah. Up. Utah. Yeah. Shout out to Dana Dimmel. Uh, yeah, Casey right. Diego. Yeah, Casey Diego. Dana. I think they're both not no longer there, but no, <laughs> no, no. RIP to the, to those guys as minors. <laughs> Not dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I had done that, you were going to give some kind of shout out to Dana Dimble, I would have gone upstairs and gotten the uh, jacket that I bought at Goodwill that 100% belonged to Dana Dimble at one point. Oh. Yeah, no, I was, I was in the Manhattan Goodwill. And, you know, anytime I go in there, I see something that's nice. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger here. Uh, and so it's like a nice Nike half sleeve windbreaker. And in the top of the collar, like I bought it, didn't think anything of it. I got it for like five bucks. I get home and I realized that there's a little label maker mark on the inside and it's got the DD on it. And it was like right after Dana Dimmel had left K-State. And I was like, this has to be Dana's jacket. So that I got, is I got, I got probably the best piece Sutton. of K-State memorabilia I have. I got a Kevin Sutton long sleeve one like that. Yeah, people probably, I mean here for much less time, but probably not as much salty attitudes towards Kevin Sutton as there is Dana Dimmel. So uh, you're probably in good shape there, but that's a good one to have. I, I would, I think it's fun to uh, know if anybody else out there has like random gear that belonged to a coach or a player at K state in the past. Uh, and I would like to know kind of the anthology of how you got it as well. Like, D.Y., I think it was just given to him. It was like, hey, we got extras. Uh, me, I was at a Goodwill. Did you steal it from somebody? I'm sure statute of limitations is long gone. So, Do you think Coach Snyder, one, took any gear besides the very few that he wore? And two, do you think he dumped any off the Goodwill? No, no. I think it's I'm still just just both. stashed in a closet somewhere. Uh, in and his he's office. And he's probably waiting. It's going to be like uh, one day he's thinking the bat signal will go out. And he's like, they need me for a third term. And he's going to open the closet and slide down the pole and come down in the Snyder Cave, and he's decked out, ready to go uh, with the windbreaker and the Cortezes on. So I think he's still got him. I think he's still just waiting uh, for when he's needed next. But they, yeah, that's they should a, they should pawn off because uh, I'm sure he's more than one windbreaker. Now maybe he just wore the same one. Or yes. No. Well, he did famously wear the same one well, for I know, like but five he, years. You think he has multiple versions of that same one is what I mean. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's just one. All right. Well, here, Drew, this, here's my question for you. Uh, since you've, you've been around you K-State longer and you, you have – What? How much do you think a Bill Snyder windbreaker could fetch? A saying. lot. I think a lot. That's why I was going to ask Drew, which one do you think would be the most expensive? Which – 
old bowl game Bill Snyder windbreaker that he wore for five years after the fact would be the one that you would covet most? Oh, got to be the Cotton Bowl one. I, yeah. I I think that that's just the most iconic one. Like that's all that I first think of when I think of like the windbreaker. Yeah, I think he wore the Cotton Bowl one for a long time. I I think I think the Alamo Bowl one is sneaky. I think the Alamo Bowl one made made the rounds quite a bit. But yeah, that's that's classic Bill Snyder. Honestly, people talk a lot about what their coaching attire would look like. I love what Bill Snyder did. Now the pants, I probably would have gone like golf pants, like everybody else does now. But I think it, I could not have pulled it off because I would have gotten too warm or too cold, depending on the the climate. But the fact that he just showed up every game, no matter the weather, with the turtleneck underneath, which that's a badass turtleneck. I bought one of those on eBay just to have, uh, you know, where you got the power cat and the swoosh on the neck. And then the windbreaker over it. it's a it's a clean look, but I could not have pulled it off because I would have gotten either too hot or too cold depending on the weather. No, neither of you guys have opinions on the the turtleneck or whatever else. All right, well let's get into the quarterback thing because, uh, I mean, it really is everybody has an opinion on Big Twelve quarterbacks right now, which is somewhat silly because of where we stand. Some teams don't even know who their quarterbacks are going to be. Arizona State just added another quarterback to their roster that might be starting for them like a week or two ago. Uh, so, and he's failed at two prior stops. So, I don't know why this would be any different, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So, here is a look at the Big Twelve quarterbacks this coming season. A lot of them there because if you thought, hey, fourteen teams, that was a ton last season. You've got sixteen this year in the Big Twelve. A lot of guys to keep up on. A lot of these guys here last year. A lot of these guys hurt and didn't play at all last year. And a lot of these guys, you've probably never heard of them before. So we can kind of throw out there where we think this is going. But before we talk about best quarterbacks in the Big 12, anybody on this list that you guys want to automatically eliminate? Jeff Sims. Okay. <laughs> from from, Jeff, from being in the what top or from being the best one? From from being in the we can we can whittle it down to like a top six or something, you know, but you're not even considering them for any high ranking spot of quarterback in the Big Twelve. I would say Jeff Sims and I would say Soresby because I didn't know who he was before he came on. I, I would also get rid of Bohannon. I just think that he kind of is what he is at this point, and BYU so is not going to get you any just better. Just eliminate one at a time and come to a consensus. I would say Soresby. <laughs> Yeah, Soresby is a good one. I think honestly, he could have been he could have lit the world on fire at whatever school he was at last year. He was at Indiana and he didn't do that. But going to Cincinnati, I automatically think that you're just not going to be a very good quarterback because we saw how Emory Jones worked out last year. Uh I think look, I like Donovan Smith, some of the things he can do, but I think we've seen him long enough in the Big 12 now that He's a fine quarterback. He can make you go woo sometimes, but most of the time he's just going to be average. So Donovan Smith's out of there as well. I, I think that Josh Hoover probably should go because Josh Hoover wasn't really the answer when he came in last year at TCU either. Just that one game where he threw for like 800 yards and then never did it again. Yeah, which uh, was that again? It was against somebody not very good, right? It's not like he. It was a conference game. Yeah, I know it was a conference game. I'm trying to. Was it UCF that he did it against? Maybe it was. It, it was. It was somebody that wasn't very good in conference. Oh, it was BYU. They gave, uh, yeah, they crushed BYU yeah. the week before they played K State, forty-four to eleven. So I, I would keep every. To be honest, I would keep everyone on the left side of the screen for now, and then on the right, I would just get rid of Soresby, probably Baron Morton. To be honest. Mm. Well. And, I – yeah, I, Morton, he's a tech quarterback, so he's not even going to be playing by week two. <laughs> so I would say that that probably is a little bit of an issue. But, I, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And, I, and I'm and i not as high on Garrett Green as others, too. Yeah, no. I think Garrett Green's another one of those that he's fine. He's not going to kill you. He's you know probably good for West Virginia, get some stability. But I don't know that he's anything overwhelming. I'm with you. No. Fafita is the only guy on the right side that I would even consider for you Maybe, know, what's coming up, and he played well last year. I would agree with that. Fafita is the only one I would consider. I would say Dark Horse is Daquan Finn because he has really good numbers at Toledo. <laughs> now, who knows what Dave Aranda will do at Baylor. I get it, but that feels like a low-floor, high-ceiling guy. Yeah, that's probably a good move for Baylor, who the quarterback play – 
the last couple of years has been a little iffy with Blake Shapin. So then, I mean, that makes it easy for everybody. You can focus on the left side of the list. And if we wanted to trade him out, we would just trade Fafita with Bohannon. Uh, yes. So yes. that that's where it would probably roll. And – and I don't know that I would put anyone on the right side over anyone else on the left. No, probably no. not. I, I mean, uh, Alan Bowman's the one that there probably has to be the conversation about just because, look, we doubted him a lot last year. Uh, we doubted Oklahoma State a lot last year. But at the end of the day, Alan He's Bowman wasn't the reason why Oklahoma State did what they did last year. He just was able to kind of execute – the, what they needed out of him, which is part of it, but I, I still, I'm, I'm not sold on the Alan Bowman thing. I think it may just be, he, they had a special year, but I don't know that it's going to be replicable. And that is honestly one of those that uh, he, he could be forgotten about by the middle of the season, and they have to move on to somebody else. Yeah, the only thing that I think that I would probably swap out would be probably Finn for Bowman. But right now, I, I just don't know a ton about Finn, and I know that Bowman is at least good enough. I would take Bowman over Finn still. And because, like you said, Bowman's good enough. And he's also the kind of quarterback, I know this is annoying, but could have a really good year because of Mike Gundy. Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. Uh, now, here's the other thing. So we brought it up kind of with Baron Morton because he's a Texas Tech quarterback, and we know how this works out. Those guys just love to get hurt. I don't know what they do if they sleep on thumbtacks and then – not hit their head in the morning on purpose to just try and see how much they their body can take. But there's a lot of guys that we didn't see last year for big parts that have gotten a lot of love in the preseason stuff, or it's not even preseason. It's just, again, list season. Cam Rising is one of those guys who it was like the first five weeks of the season, it was like, yeah, he's going to come back this week. He might come back for this game. He's going to be ready. And then he just didn't play the entire season. And for some reason, we didn't see Cam rising at all last year because of injury. He's still getting this notoriety bump. Meanwhile, like I'll stand up for a guy like Jalen Daniels in, in some respects because as much as I'll make the injury jokes about him too, like, yeah, he's not going to be on the field. We have seen Jalen Daniels play in a college football game more recently than Cam rising. Why do we think that Cam rising still deserves to be in this you know, rarefied air over a guy like Jalen Daniels? Because in the seasons, I know I know he didn't play last year, but prior to that, he's one of the best quarterbacks in college football at his best when he's healthy. So I, <laughs> no one's going to like, like this, but if you tell me that everyone's going to be a hundred percent, which quarterback do you want? I, you know, I, you know, I'd lean. I, I, there's a part of me would want to take Avery Johnson, of course, because of the upside. But if you're telling me all these quarterbacks are going to be 100, percent then I'm probably going to take Cam Rising. Yeah, I think it's because Cam Rising just has a high floor, and like I think that some of these other guys, like you look at them and you're not really sure what to expect because they either haven't played a ton or they're just super young, so you don't know really what to expect. And, and Cam Rising, when he's healthy, I think you know what you're getting. Yeah, and, and I would even say, if not rising, had he not had a coaching change, I might pick Noah Fafita. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably a good one. I think I think that's that's very true. And I think it's going to be interesting with Arizona because they didn't lose as many guys as we thought they might to the portal when Jed Fish left. But I, I still think that there may be some differences in how things go down there that uh, can kind of derail them. So if we're trying to narrow this down here to – if we want to, you know, look for a top six, locks would seem to be Fafita and Rising, and talent-wise, probably Shadur Sanders. Success-wise, we'll see how that goes, but he probably deserves, to, he certainly yeah. deserves to be in there. If you're you're going to say pick the best six quarterbacks, Shadur Sanders has to be in there. If you ask me which quarterbacks I want to build my team around, he's probably not in my top six, to be quite honest. <laughs> But we're saying best six quarterbacks. It's Shadur, it's Kim Rising, it's Noah Fafita. And then the rest can probably be debated. But if you're gonna <coughs> excuse me, if you're gonna ignore the health issues with Kim Rising, then I think you have to put Jalen Daniels in your top six. Oh, well, and I, and I, I would agree. agree with that. I so I think you go rising and Sanders and Fafita, 
and then Daniels would be in there. So that if we're trying to narrow down to a top six, that leaves two more spots, which to me, it would seem like the obvious answers would be KJ Jefferson and Avery Johnson. Now, in a lot of these lists that have been out there, Avery Johnson has been left out of them. And look, I understand to some extent why people are doing that because it's limited time that you've seen him on the field. He hasn't been a full-time starter. But again, we've seen Avery Johnson play quarterback in a college football game as a starter more recently than Cam Rising and Jalen Daniels, guys of, of that nature. I think Avery Johnson should be in there with K, KJ Jefferson. I think that leaves guys then like, you know, Rocco Becht or Alan Bowman that you're talking about on the outside looking in, which will, you know, piss people off. Yeah, I think you have to go Cam Rising, Noah Fafita, Stuart Sanders, I think Jalen Daniels. And then if you want, if we're doing like this top six, right? I think you have to pick two of Avery Johnson, KJ Jefferson, and I would put Rocco back in that category, I think. Yeah, I was going to say my top six would probably be Fafita, Sanders, Rising, Daniels, and then Avery Johnson, and then uh, Rocco Beck, and have KJ Jefferson as the seventh. Well, and I, I don't totally disagree with that because I, I think it's probably pretty borderline between Beck and Jefferson. I think I think KJ Jefferson is slightly overrated in some respects. My theory on this is when Sam Pittman got to Arkansas and they, they were better than people thought that first year, I think immediately people were like, oh, we're all the way bought in on this. Well, then it didn't work out last year, obviously. So there, the lone bright spot was kind of KJ Jefferson. And so people were still kind of latching on to, hey, I bought into this, but it's not obviously working out here. I think KJ Jefferson's fine. I think he's been probably built up to be something a little bit more than he is. Um, and I, obviously, potential-wise, I think Rocco Beck's potential, because he's got more time to play, I think it's it's probably higher than what Jefferson's is. So that's that's probably where I would stand on this right now. I would go Jefferson over Becht for this year. Uh, and mainly because I don't think anyone's wrong about what they just described, KJ Jefferson. But in terms of quarterback fitting scheme and system, I don't know that there's a better fit than KJ Jefferson with Gus Malzahn. In terms yeah, of, of how you look at this, because Avery Johnson, like I said, has been left out of this top six, essentially, in a lot of these lists because of the lack of time that we've seen him on the floor. Number one, is that wise, and does that make sense to do? But number two, if this was an exercise to project more so to what we're saying at the end of the year in more of a specific order, because we'll have a year to see how it all plays out, uh, would you change anything about your guys' lists? I would, what I would say is that from start to finish, in terms of what we have on the list, the two guys that I think, or I would say three guys that probably have the ability to climb up it the farthest, and I'll go four actually. Avery Johnson, just because he could be much better than what the public generally is expecting. KJ Jefferson, just because of that fit that I talked about, could have a big year, I think. Jalen Daniels, if he's healthy, game one to game 12, he's probably, I mean, he's going to be in the discussion for first team quarterback on the all big 12 team. And then Dequan Finn and Baylor, I think is the wild card. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. I think that if we were doing potential wise and what I think that they could be, I think you'd be kind of silly to not have Avery Johnson in the top three because of how high his ceiling is. And if he hits it, I think that he could be a first team all big 12 guy as well. And then if Jalen Daniels stays healthy, he could be in that first team category, but I, I'm still kind of bought into Rocco Beck a little bit. I, I think that last year he had a really solid year, solid year. And I think that this next year, I think that he could potentially be even better, but they'd have an offensive coordinator change as well. So I'm a little hesitant to have him a little bit higher, but I, I like him a little bit more than KJ Jefferson right now. I just, I just don't love the Iowa State offensive system. I don't think it's conducive to big numbers. I worry about Rocco's no weapons a little bit too. They're not necessarily explosive playmakers around him. I think he's a good player. I just don't know if he's set up for success. I think you're muted. I think that's probably a good thought with, with Rocco back in the way that he's set up because I he played well last year for them and probably better than you would have assumed. So – 
Uh, I think if if you look at this and if you're asking me, hey, narrow this down, and obviously not assuming injury because obviously two of the most talented guys in this league right now at quarterback have serious injury backgrounds, I would say that I think the three best quarterbacks by the end of the season in the Big 12 and the way that we look at it, I think Avery Johnson and Jalen Daniels are pretty much locks to me if you get a healthy season out of both of those guys. I think their their talent combined with how you play the game of college football as well as what's around them, I think it would be tough for them to not be two of the three best quarterbacks in the league. And then I think it comes down to how do you make the case for probably Sanders, Beck, and Fafidix. I I think Cam Rising's fine, but I just don't know how much of this the Utah success is to be attributed to him. Mm-hmm. No, I can tell. You, you're very, very skeptical on Cam Rising. Yeah, and also, like, playing a game first, you know? Like, I know that we're suspending injury belief, but I have not seen Cam Rising play a game in over a year. So, And, and some of this, when you get down to it, too, some of this is going – when you look at the end of the season, it shouldn't be – a lot of the formula, but it's going to come down to who's winning as well. And that's why yes. I like, I, I, I kind of fall out on Shadur because I don't think Colorado's going to do a lot of winning. No. Yeah. And, and well, because I, of that, he'll probably fall a little bit, which I mean, right or wrong is just how it goes. With quarterbacks. Although daddy says he's a top five pick. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Look, uh, I, he, he, I mean, he played fine last year, but it wasn't like anything. I, I don't know how you quantify because so much of being a quarterback just comes down at the end of the day to winning. Like that's that is a, a position that no matter where you've been, most of what you do is defined by winning. It's why you know R.I.P. Alec Bussey. I would always tell him, like he was trying to be a Justin Fields defender as a Bears fan. I was like, I don't know. Like every week I hear about how Fields has done this and that, and then it's like, oh, the Bears lost again, thirty-one to ten. Like. Maybe at some point he would have won a game or two along the way. Like a lot of these quarterbacks, before they get to high levels of success, we see them win a couple games that maybe they shouldn't or pack in a few more than what they're accustomed to. That uh, does not seem to be the case with where Colorado is set up. I mean, the the best win they had last year was that game at TCU, and that was a TCU team that turned out to not be very good last season. First game so, of the year. It went all yeah. downhill from there. Uh, yeah, when, when you featured Dylan Edwards all, the most you had all season, and you know we know where he is now. So yeah, what I would say is like, if Arizona didn't have a coaching change, I think my unquestioned, uncontested number one would be Noah Fafita. Yeah, I I, th- I think that I agree with that as well. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, I, and I don't know. I won't. I won't go too much more into it because obviously I don't want to be massive homer for Avery Johnson, but I, I really just think based on what we've seen at as a true freshman last year, combined with what it seems like he can do, I just I think if you're projecting out who has the highest ceiling of all these guys as a college quarterback, I think it's definitely Avery Johnson. And that's not even just considering what you can accomplish as a team type of goal thing, because you know some of these guys are older, so it's a little different uh, in different sort of circumstances. But I, I think in terms of like, if you get the best version of Avery Johnson compared to the best version of all these other guys, I think you'd probably rather have Avery Johnson as your quarterback as a college football team. Because that's that's it's a different requirement than what you want as a quarterback in general and certainly one as a pro prospect. Yeah, I would say you say it that way, the best version of college quarterbacks of all these guys, the best version of themselves. I think I would be a little splintered between Avery Johnson, Jalen Daniels, and Noah Fafita. Yeah, that probably seems probably seems fair. I also think to this point, those three guys we've we've seen enough in the way that they carry themselves on the field that that's also a way that you would want your quarterback to be. Um, we've also seen from some of these guys, namely Shadur Sanders, that that's not a way that you want to carry yourself as a quarterback, especially a quarterback of a team that like Colorado was bad. They improved last year. It may not have seemed like it at the end, but they they were better from what they were. Like you need to have a certain type of attitude. And to this point, Shadur and more so his father have not shown that. Well, we'll do an exercise here real quick. And we'll start. And I got two ideas here. First one, name someone on the left side of the screen that you think will completely flop. I know Mason is came rising. 
No, 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 no. I'm going Alan Bowman. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you can't well, pick Jerry. And, Bo, you can't pick Jerry Bohannon. Yeah, we're not counting Jerry Bohannon. Yeah. He just. I'll, I'll tell you what happened there, guys. Uh, I was putting this together, and I was just going off the top of my head, and I completely forgot that we were at 16 teams this year instead of 14, and so I had made it a perfect seven and seven. I was like, God, oh, crap. So uh, that's how uh, Soresby and Bohannon ended up where they did. Uh, no Bohannon, then I'd say, ooh. Probably Alan Bowman's the safest. He's the least talented of, of the guys yeah. that are on the left side. See, yeah, I, don't think, I, don't I think, think he's, he's even less talented than Jerry Bohannon. I mean, and Jerry Bohannon is not even supposed to be on the left side of the list. But I I think I wouldn't pick Bowman because I don't think he flops for Gundy. I think I think there's a floor there. Uh, a flop, I will say Rocco Beck just because he's not set up for success in terms of playmakers and, and system. So that's on Matt Campbell. DY's dogging Matt Campbell here. Not Rocco, but Matt Campbell. And, and new coordinator. Maybe they'll have to do something better. Right yeah. side. Who would you stand for on the right side that can have a big splash and you can't take Noah Fafita? Uh, I, uh, I should we? I think we should eliminate Finn from this as well. Yeah, just because also it seems be like on. he'd be the unanimous pick because there's so much unknown okay. with him. Yep. Uh, so if I had to go that way, I <laughs> mean, it's tough. not great. Uh, because I think some of these guys have a pretty hard ceiling that they would hit, but I guess I would probably go. It's tough, man. I mean, I, I would probably still go Baron Morton, but like, I just, he's a Texas tech quarterback. I know he's going to be. I thought hurt. about that, but I couldn't do it. I, I'm you thinking about that. Good? I can't, I I'm thinking about Baron Morton, but I don't think that I can do it. I'm going I'm Baron about, Green. I, I was going to say, I'm going to be gross and say Garrett Green because I, yeah. I just think that he can get the rushing yards too. And yeah. and he's proven that he can play an actual season and Baron Morton hasn't yet. And neither can Donovan Smith probably. So. No. Yeah. Because so he, he, he has that Texas Tech stench on him. <laughs> and, well, and I think that Josh Hoover isn't very good. And no. then Jeff Sims was terrible at both stops. And, oh, then you're, Steve, and I, Soresby, I don't even know who he is. So then you're just I, left I, with I, Garrett yeah, Green. I really don't know who Soresby is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Here's what I will also say, given the Josh Hoover situation. Uh, I mean, this is just a like a perfect name. Uh, TCU has brought in a Fort Worth kid, a four-star quarterback in the 2024 class. So, like, if you're not buying into Hoover, there's a real possibility that we're seeing a guy uh, named House Henny at, uh, at like halfway through the season That's because. Cool. Just, no, spelled differently. It's H E J N Y. So maybe it's not even Henny, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think that – I think Garrett Green, he would have been probably my other option here. I, lo I love Donovan Smith, but he would have been my other pick if I didn't go with Baron Morton. So, but, yeah, good, I, good exercise there. I And I will say this to kind of go off of that. Even though I picked Garrett Green, I think West Virginia is probably the team that people are really starting to like that I don't see it. I, I see some regression this year from the Mountaineers. A major regression because of the schedule. They got – kind schedule makers last year this year the schedule makers were not near yeah. as kind and like we saw what four years of of neil brown there and we're like oh, this isn't very good so neil, we're supposed you know to just neil brown is? he is football mike boynton nice guy <laughs> nice yeah, guy. true no, nice although guy. he did he did walk in was it on grant ksu in the bathroom at big 12 media days <laughs> <laughs> they had a little moment there so uh, i don't know Maybe yeah, not that guy. Came out of it. No, I, he just reminds me of the football Mike Boynton. I don't know. Yeah, uh, we'll talk head coaches next week. I think that's a good place to go because uh, then I can I can get a preseason fraud watch going uh, for for you guys. Have that ready to go. I do have one more thing for you though. I promised everybody a surprise. Uh, one of the reasons why we're talking lists today is because of former Iowa State kicker Grant Mahoney. Uh, who many of you probably remember as the guy that missed a kick in 2009 against K-State. It was blocked. Uh, K-State ended up Still winning missed. that game by one. Yeah, that's true. Still goes down as a miss. It's your miss. The offensive line isn't over one on PATs. Uh, so he got into it because he didn't like Brian Anderson's Twitter stick, which I think is very funny. And he just completely didn't understand that, hey, Avery Johnson might be number two. And also, it was an unnumbered list that Brian Anderson responded yeah. to. It's like, yes, he was second in order, but it was not numbered. It was so, not like, numbered. If you like, if you're going to pull reach. out a number, 
I feel – yeah, exactly. You have to be so – mentally warped by pain from K-State over the years victim mentality. Yeah. immediately go to that and not think, hey, maybe this guy's sticking up for his own dude that might wear number two right now. And then the and then the program's Twitter account got in on it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate that one as much because I kind of could see it, but also, like, don't be so dumb to get duped by your idiot <laughs> kicker who misses <laughs> kicks that could tie games. Uh, so in lieu of that, I wanted to give you guys my list, a top five of my favorite Big 12 kickers from 10 plus years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> 10 plus years ago. Mark yeah. Veronica? Well, I didn't go that far back, DY. I, these are all guys that I have some kind of personal connection to, uh, and I'll, I'll just go from there. So any anybody want to throw out guesses on here? I also made sure there's only one Wildcat and uh, no teams repeat. So I've got five separate schools involved uh, here. I was, I was not in the Big 12 10 plus years ago, so I'm probably – Grant Mahoney is probably in on this list. It's going to be of no help. Oh, Drew, you don't understand the exercise here. My favorite oh. my favorite of our time in my time in Big 12 is Matt McCrane still. Ooh, that, he's that in is UFL, a good I think. He's in UFL. Matt yeah. McCrane is a, is a good option. Uh, let me just show you guys the list. Number one, the first kicker at K-State that I remember in my lifetime, shout out to Josh Cherry. So Josh Cherry is number Ooh, one on the list. Jason Crosby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number two on the list, Michael Honeycutt. Felt like he was at Oklahoma forever and feels like the only thing I remember him doing is missing kicks left and right. Uh, 2011, he missed two field goals in a three-point loss at home to Texas Tech. And that weekend, I was staying – my cousin was going to KU at the time. So I was in eighth grade when this happened. But I went up there for the K-State-KU game that weekend. K-State demolishes KU. Cats are unbeaten. Things are looking good. And all Oklahoma has to do is just beat Texas Tech at home. And I'm telling myself, well, college game day is going to be in Manhattan next week for K-State-Oklahoma. Michael Honeycutt misses kicks left and right. And then it all comes full circle three years later when in 2014 – he gets a kick blocked, or he misses one against K-State that ends up letting K-State win the game in Norman. So Michael Honeycutt, number two on this list. Also, fun fact, side note on Michael Honeycutt, uh, he got arrested with possession of meth uh, back in 2016. So that's just that a little fun fact for you. That, that uh, was I, not where I thought that that was going. It no, was. I actually see. tuned out, and then I heard meth. So uh, so I, I Googled Michael Honeycutt, Oklahoma, to bring up his OU page. His Sooner Sports profile comes up first. The very next thing is the Norman transcript story from seven years ago about a, a, a former OU kicker arraigned for drug charge. So Michael Honeycutt missing kicks, doing meth, or at least possessing meth, uh, allegedly by the police in the Norman transcript. So just protecting myself there. Number three on the list, Dan Bailey staying in the Sooner State. Cowboy, cowboy. Yep, exactly. He was a cowboy. Thought he was a really good kicker for a while for the Cowboys. So Dan Bailey, number three on my list. Number four, also NFL connection here. D.Y. loves the Packers. He probably loves really? Mason Crosby. He yeah. shares my name. And also because of that, for the first like six years that I played fantasy football, starting at like the age of, you know, seven or eight, uh, Mason Crosby was always my fantasy kicker. I always made sure I had Mason Crosby. So he went, there's that. He, there was about 15 NFL seasons there, 13 of them. He was special. And then there was like two where he couldn't hit anything. Yeah, and then he kind of – I yeah, he weird career at the end for Mason Crosby. Yeah. And then you might look there and you say, oh, that's, that's going to be number five on Mason's list right there, Justin Tucker at Texas. No, that's number 21 on my list. So the 21st favorite kicker from 10-plus years ago, that's Justin Tucker. So there you have it. I don't know. Do you guys know any other kickers that wore the number 21 in history? Um, no. No, okay. Uh, Grant Mahoney <laughs> wore the number 21, believe it or not. So, ha-ha, number 21. Uh, so that's, yeah, that, there we go. That's my list, my top five Big 12 wasn't, kickers wasn't, from wasn't 10 wasn't plus numbered. years ago. Hey, Grant Mahoney, that's not numbered. <laughs> yeah, that's also not numbered. Not numbered, but it is assumed that Justin Tucker is number 21 on that list. So uh, probably the most notable Big 12 kicker post-college. So I would, you know, does, put that does out. Does Brian there. Anderson yeah, respond to the comments and goes, ha ha, number 17, is that tenant? 17, 17 <laughs> is tenant. 
Yeah, well, and then I'm going to have to hit him with whoever number 17 on my fake list is. Be like, well, actually, you didn't see the rest of the list there, B.A., but uh, I had I had Ian Patterson at number 17. So how dare you disrespect one of Bill's kickers? So Ian Patterson, the king of just booming it out of the back of the end zone on a kickoff, but not really making the kicks or being even trusted to go out there. I, I always like when teams have a kickoff kicker and a field goal kicker. You know, you're going to actually score for us. The other guy, just kick it as hard as you can. Like when Devin Ankle was, was a, kicking off for K-State. Or, that was or a very Bill Snyder thing. And Ty Zentner kicked off when he was the punter. Yeah. Yep. Very true. And then so, he did all of it. <laughs> yeah. Good practice for him. Worked out well for Ty Zentner, who uh, didn't make the list, unfortunately. He, maybe he's number 17. Maybe he's – we don't know where he is on. It was 10 plus years ago. He doesn't qualify. Yeah. And, again, oh, not yeah. not a numbered list right here. So, I can confirm Josh Cherry is number one. Michael Honeycutt, <laughs> you miss kicks, get arrested with meth in your possession. You are number two confirmed. <laughs> the order changes for those other guys, though. So, a lot of a lot of things up in the air there. But uh, those are my, my kickers from 10-plus years ago and my list on them. So – Good way to end the show. Good way to end the week. Uh, if you want more about serious K-State stuff, head over to kstateonline.com. We've got football and basketball recruiting news for you. Football doing a bunch of different things. Basketball doing a couple of very specific things in the transfer portal, trying to fill out the final couple of open scholarships on the team. So we'll have you covered from that. And uh, plenty of other stuff over on the KSO YouTube if you haven't checked it out this week breakdown of max jones the latest commit to the k-state basketball team an update on football recruiting at the high school level and plenty of other things so for drew galloway and Derek young i'm mason both thanks for watching k-state online